The death of a pharaoh was an occasion marked by celebration, mourning and mummification. But the world doesn't end when a king dies. Someone always takes up the mantle. I'm Steve Coleman, joined today by Todor Nikolov, building our own dynasties. Let's take a look at ruling families then. How do they work? The ruling families are a representation of the family, of your faction leader. Over there you can see the relations between the different characters. They might be children or parents or siblings. Uh, they might be married to each other. And from this screen you can point the scion. The scion is the character who will inherit the faction in case the faction leader dies, which is in most cases inevitable. Oh, so you're telling me Ajax gets older and can die? Well, yes, uh, even Ajax is a man. However, we have thought of uh, fans of Ajax in particular, and for them, uh, we have included customization option that allows you to tweak the number of turns that it takes for an ear to pass. So, for example, you might want to play with characters that quickly age and they change with new ones. Then you can uh, select each turn to last for an ear, or you could slow things down and reach up to 12 turns per year. And Epic if warrior. you really do not want to lose Ajax at all, you can have immortal characters which act just like they do in, uh, in Pharaoh. Of course, this is absolutely ahistorical unless you consider vampires uh, history. Let's say, for example, that I had a really bad campaign and my entire family got wiped out. What would happen then? If potentially you got yourself into that situation, this does not mean that your campaign ends, but uh, in case your entire family gets wiped out, a random character will conveniently arise to take over and become the next faction leader. But you will likely have to face some considerable penalties because your, your people, your populace will, will not be happy with such a transition and they will likely consider it illegitimate and there will be disorder around your faction. So let's say I'm the ruling pharaoh or the great king or the Wanax, of course, or the king of the universe. Yeah. Uh, what changes in the ruling family mechanic? The changes are, first of all, you see not only your faction, but all members of the dynasty. So, for example, there might be faction leaders that belong to other factions. Let's say the Egyptian starting position. You have Merneptah and all of his children that all uh, are uh, faction leaders to different factions. This is one aspect. Um, another thing is that you can have an overview of the history of your entire dynasty. So, yourself, any previous rulers and all of their deeds. Deeds are events that take place during your campaign. They're recorded over there, both your successes and your failures. And based on your deeds, you can unlock epithets. These are kind of small titles that you can customize your uh, faction leader name with. And they are really a reflection of what you have done in your campaign. Uh, you might have conquered a lot of settlements, which means that you will be known as Ramesses the Conqueror or perhaps you have lost a lot of settlements, then you might be called Ramesses the inept defender or something like that. In addition to all of these, when you become part of a dynasty, you can also arrange political marriages. Okay, so you're saying I can strengthen my ties with other factions by giving away my children? Well, other than sounding fantastic, uh, what else can I do in diplomacy? Well, yes, giving away your children is one of the things that you can do. Uh, this is called in the game uh, Diplomatic Marriage, oh, where either you me. give away one of your characters or take, one of, uh, take a foreign character in marriage, which um, will increase the diplomatic relations between yourself and another faction. The political marriage is something similar. However, in a political marriage, each character remains in their faction. There is, again, better diplomacy, better relations between the factions, but it requires some sort of diplomatic treaty before it, it can happen, at least a, a non-aggression pact between the factions. What else you can do? You can uh, force inheritance. This is a new diplomatic action which sends one of your characters to another faction where they're automatically selected as the scion who will inherit the rule of the faction once the faction leader is dead. And once this happens, you will have a relative ruling another faction, which will, will vastly increase uh, your diplomatic relations. This is something which I usually do with Paris when I play Troy. I send him off to another faction to, so that he can become the scion and then come back to me with the faction itself. In addition to all of that, 
you can also trade with and barter legitimacy in diplomacy with the dynasty update. What so you, you can exchange economic oh. resources for someone else's legitimacy to boost your own, or you can sell your own legitimacy for resources. Although this might not be a good idea if you are preparing for any I civil know. wars. With more campaign customization options and reworks like time per turn and updated legacy traditions, there's never been more ways to tweak your playstyle. Check out our blogs for more information and join us next time as we go out to war.